Lose yourself in the breathtaking beauty of picturesque landscapes, tranquil waters and traditional fishing villages where time seems to slow down. This is the enchanting Stockholm Archipelago. Join me, Jetaway Joe, as I take you into the heart of the Stockholm Archipelago and I'll show you why you should add a couple of days here to sample a slice of authentic Swedish island life. The number of islands on the archipelago can make choosing somewhere to stay overwhelming, and accommodation tends to be Airbnb wooden cabins, hostels or small B&Bs. The town of Vaxholm can be seen as the hub of the archipelago with its busy harbour, but a lot of the islands though have very few facilities, so if you're a foreign traveller, islands like Galno, Moya or Sandham that have shops and a couple of bars are probably the safest bet. That's the main reason I chose Moya. It looked quiet and peaceful enough, but had a couple of general shops for groceries, as well as a couple of bars too. The main mode of transport across the archipelago is by boat. Waxholm's Bolloget is the name of the company that provides ferry transport throughout the area. Their timetables are posted online around a month in advance. I'll pop a link to their website in the description. Ferries leave from the Strumkajen in Stockholm city centre, and here you'll also find an information booth, which was helpful. The timetables online are all posted in Swedish and can get quite confusing. Schedules vary by day and by season, with weekends in summer being the busiest time, when locals from Stockholm head to the archipelago for their summer holidays. Many inter-island networks crisscross the waterways throughout the area too, enabling you to hop easily from one island to another. Tickets are purchased on the ferry and are checked when you disembark. The cost for a one-way ferry from Stockholm to the dock at Berg on the island of Moja for me was 173 Swedish kroner. Some parts of the archipelago, including the town of Vaxholm and the docks of Borda and Solenkroka, are all connected by road to Stockholm city centre, and these even have bus services there too. The ferries though, they run like clockwork. Departing Stromkai and bang on time, we set full steam ahead at first for the dock of Boda, where we changed to connect to a ferry bound for Moya. I was really apprehensive as I only had a couple of minutes connection at Boda, but it was so easy walking off one ferry and getting on the next. Let's take a look on board the ferry. There's plenty of seating downstairs, as well as luggage storage, the ticket booth, toilets, and a reasonably priced cafe selling a range of drinks and snacks. There's free refills on the coffee too. There's also a seating area upstairs, and sitting out on the top deck when the weather is nice is a really lovely way to travel. The best part of the ferry is just taking in the stunning, unspoilt scenery, and spotting the wildlife. If you enjoy these videos, please drop us a like. Let me know in the comments if you fancy a trip to the Stockholm Archipelago, and hit the subscribe button for more travel guides and vlogs. Arriving at Berg, I was instantly taken back by the colourful wooden buildings and the forested landscape that was surrounded by water. So I've arrived on the island of Moya. It took us about four hours to get here, but we've finally arrived. And this is where we're staying for a couple of nights. It's just this really cute Airbnb. But let's go take a look around. Outside was a large terrace with a grill and seating area that ran the full length of the cabin 
as well as the toilet and shower which was quite the experience. Stepping inside there was the main living area which had a couple of sofa beds, a large dining area and a surprisingly well equipped kitchen with everything you could need for a couple of days self catering. In the bedroom was a wardrobe and four bunk beds as well as plenty of books and games. In total this cabin could sleep up to six although I think it would be a bit of a tight squeeze. What a super cute Airbnb, such a good find. Um, but now, time to head into town and maybe grab a beer. It's a bit warm, so it's beer garden weather. The cabin was just 500 meters or so from the dock and village center, but it was surrounded by peaceful, lush green countryside. It was a short walk down a little country lane into the village. As a village, Berg was serene, quaint and tranquil. There's very few vehicles on the island and most of the locals get around by bike or ATV, but more on that later. Surrounded by water, there was just boats and docks everywhere, with pretty maroon coloured wooden houses dotted amongst the green landscape. The village had a tourist information centre, a well-stocked co-op, a pretty church and a couple of restaurants and bars with great beer gardens. This was perfection after a morning spent jumping on and off ferries. After a busy few days in Stockholm, this was the perfect place to take a step back, switch off, and unwind. I said earlier that the island is largely car free and most locals tend to get around by bike or ATV. So do as the locals do and hire a bike to get about. There's a couple of places in the village where you can pick up bikes for the day and as the island is mostly flat, forested and there are very few vehicles it makes it super easy to bike around. From Berg, it's around 5 kilometers up the coast to the small village of Longvik and it's easy to stop off at the many little villages along the way too. We can sit together It's so beautiful You and me We meant to be In the great outdoors Longvik was another sleepy little village, and it just had a co-op and a bar. But up here there was a small sandy beach and if you were feeling brave, shallow water for swimming. It was a bit too cold for me though. Absolutely beautiful here. It's just so peaceful and wild. It's just so relaxed. Forever free. 
After a quick refreshment stop, it was time for a steady bike back down to Berg. Meant to be in the great outdoors, forever free. The day cycling had worked up a bit of an appetite. One of the handful of places to eat in the village is this little pizza bar. Like everywhere else, it had a great beer garden out back, and I can confirm, the pizzas were decent. I'd worked up a bit of a first two, and a couple of beers in the midsummer evening sunshine went down a real treat. Those few beers sadly brought my couple of days on the archipelago to an end, as I had to catch an early morning ferry back to Stockholm the day after. The archipelago is ideal for a few days of chilling out, getting back to basics and exploring this beautiful natural environment. As it's so easy to reach from Stockholm, it's well worth a couple of days here to chill out and sample go slow Swedish island life. I hope I've shown you the beauty of these islands and just how easily accessible they are on the network of ferries that service them. If you've enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, tell me if you're planning a trip to the Stockholm Archipelago, and subscribe for more travel vlogs and guides. Thanks for watching, see you next time.